Alrighty, so you guys voted and it came out as a fucking tie. So, I just took a pick and said, fuck it, I'm gonna place my bets on Warhammer Fantasy, because I haven't covered that in a while. So, here we are. What the fuck is Dragons? Now, for those of you who do not know what the Bible is or don't know what Aztec and culture is or doesn't know just about any sort of culture in the world because there's some sort of alien enigma, a dragon is this massive serpentine beast. Many people theorize that the reason why all dragons look alike in every culture of our real world is just simply because dragons are a mixture of everything that we find deadly. It is airbound, something that we cannot do. After all, it is able to roam through the skies and descend upon us at any time. Very terrifying. It's got that snarling mouth and snarling fangs like a lion. But then it's also got the serpentine body with scales in it. Of course, in some they don't breathe fire, some of them they do. But the fire could be more of a metaphor for its serpentine look as venom and poison. Now, this is of course real world dragons we're talking about. Now, Warhammer Fantasy dragons, well, they vary in size, shape, appearance, and they have been known to be just magical beings that are ancient before the old ones, which is very uh, eye-catching. Before the old ones, huh? So, let's get into it. Now, the fact that the dragons have been around since, well, shit, as far as we know, before the old ones, which is well over, like, 10,000 years. We're talking, like, over thousands of years. Like, it's uncountable. Longer than any elven lifespan is the way I could put it. The fact that they've been around for that long, it's actually pretty interesting because no dragon today is of that age which of course is actually a very good thing you see dragons don't have a stop on their growth rate they just keep growing and growing and growing they only stop growing when they are dead their growth is only determined by their age that means that any dragon of any type can be gargantuan in size it's just a matter of time some dragons have it easier, some dragons have it harder. I mean, let's just point that out right off the bat. Some dragons just naturally are just bigger than others. Like, there will be some dragons that we'll talk about later in my YouTube channel that are usually not that big, and that's mostly because the area they're in is so rife with conflict, they usually die after they have mated, procreated, and... That stops them, ultimately, from becoming these gargantuan sizes. Other dragons, like the sun dragon, star dragon, moon dragon, those ones are usually larger because they live in areas, aka the high elves, take care of them. So they don't really deal with a lot of conflict as they hibernate for centuries. So that allows them to get to those gargantuan sizes. Dragons have been shown, though, to be very capable of a lot of things. They don't only just use their size to just smash people to bits, or their massive teeth to just chew through the thickest of walls. No, they also have magical capabilities. Some dragons are even stated to be just pure essences of magic. And it could be different types of magic. It could be Shyesh magic. It could be Akshi magic. These are like, you know, fire, pain. So they can be purely magical. And they can do some very awesome things with that magical ties. But more than often than not, we usually just see it just breathe fire. That's usually enough. No need for anything fancy. No need to summon a whirlwind of flames or, you know, summon a massive gust of wind that could just topple over the stoniest of mountains. No, no need for all that crazy jazz. And, of course, we should talk about how people perceive dragons. You see, dragons are not very welcomed in the Warhammer universe. Despite being the oldest species... They have not really been treated nicely by the later comers of the Warhammer Fantasy universe. You see, humans regard them with a mixture of fascination, but also fear. 
After all, one dragon fire can easily destroy years worth of crops, which could cause the entire town to just starve. There is also the dwarves, who just outright have a racial fear of dragons. Literally, you want to get to the very soul of a dwarf, have them hear the flapping of a dragon's wings, have them hear it roar, and every dwarf, those stout, steadfast dudes who have the faces of the mountain, who can never show signs of retreat or fear, yeah, a dragon will get rid of all that nonsense. A dwarf will stop dead in his, dra- in his tracks and piss himself from how terrifying dragons are. They have been a huge plague to the dwarven kind, mostly because of the fact that dwarves live in nice, cushiony mountains, which dragons tend to like living in. One for the heat, as some mountain holds are inside volcanoes, but also for just the coziness of it. You know, being inside a cave is a lot safer than being out in the middle of a forest. There's also one minor detail, though. Dwarves have a lot of gold. They have a lot of minerals. They have a lot of valuable, shiny objects in their holds. Dragons like to adorn themselves. They like to be surrounded in these metals. They like to feel as great as they truly are. So, this has caused some dwarf holds to actually be destroyed. So, this leads us to one of the last races. How do the elves perceive the very infamous dragons? Well, the elves actually love dragons. They love them a lot. Wood elves don't really care for them, mostly because they're wood elves. They usually don't care for anybody. They don't even care really for humans. They don't care for orcs. They really just don't care. They don't even really care about chaos unless it's inside their forest. So, eh, they don't really have much of an opinion. They just don't want it burning down their trees. They, they really hate fire. So, if you're not a fire dragon or you're not a dragon that's able to spray fire, they're okay with you. They really don't care. If anything, you may accidentally get converted into a forest dragon by staying in their forest. But what about the other elves, the dark elves? The dark elves are very interesting because the dark elves view themselves superior to everything. They are, in their mind, superior to all beings, including dragons. After all, dragons were never able to make cities. They were never able to, you know, lead armies. So... To a Dark Elf's mind, they are greater than dragons. And the Dark Elves are able to cast vile, wicked spells that can mentally shackle a dragon. So that way the dragon will follow its bidding. And there's nothing the dragon can do, no matter how engrossed it is in the lores of magic, could it break itself away. This is very, very dark. Most of the time, Dark Dragons, which are the Dark Elf Dragons are so heavily tortured and so heavily enchanted with magic that there really is no mind behind them. They are now just nothing more than beasts because, well, if you take a man and you torture him and you subjugate him to a lot of drugs and, you know, warp fuckery, then there's not much of a man left, is there? He's just a corpse that does your bidding. So that is how the Dark Elves approach them. If anything, it brings many Dark Elves great glee and delight to break one of these proud creatures and to bend them to their knees. They find it very enjoyable. They love it. There's nothing more that will get a Dark Elf's boner harder than anything than to give them the idea, hey, we have a dragon. You can break him mentally and torture him. Oh yeah, Dark Elves love that shit. They love it. But while Dark Elves know everything there is to torture a dragon, and while the dwarves know everything there is to kill a dragon, and while humans know enough about dragons to just avoid them, let's talk about the last race, the High Elves. What do they think of dragons? The High Elves love dragons. They revere dragons. If anything, the two species are entwined with one another. After all, Kalidor Dragon Tamer was known to have actually imbued his mind with the dragons. 
So much so that the dragons even referred him as the Great Lord. In their tongue, that is called Kalim Kavanan, which means the Great Lord in Dragon Tongue. Now, the dragons hold much respect for the High Elves, as the High Elves treat them with respect in return. The High Elves do not usually treat them as some sort of beast, or if anything, they don't treat them with fear either. They show that they are capable of magic and they're capable of living in this world with the dragons and are even able to bow down before the dragons, which no other species has done. Every other species just runs or, well, fights back. So as such, most dragons are usually found living with the high elves. Now the dragons, though, they view high elves with a bit of mixture. Because you see, I really like reading um, high elf books about dragons. Because the High Elves actually mind meld with the dragons that they ride. They actually mix their mind with the dragons. So that way they're telepathically speaking at all times with each other. And they can sense each other's feelings. Now, not every elf can do this. Only a few elves of the specific bloodline of, dra- of the Kalidor dragon tamer are able to do this. But it is pretty interesting to note that the dragons, despite being proud species, being these great beings, they don't seem to have much of an understanding of minor concepts like respect or dignity or just, you know, abiding by rules and laws. They don't understand this. And the reason is, is that they are too above it. This is why the elves revere the dragons because they view themselves as superior to most species in the world but not above dragons. Instead, they look up to dragons, hoping to one day be as great as the dragons, where petty things like customs and traditions or rules just don't bother them anymore because they're above this. Now, despite being so high and mighty, the dragons do seem to be a bit, well, wild. It's even been noted by some dragon tamers, like... Imladric, that the dragons are a little hot-tempered. They're a little wild. Like, to them, the answers are usually simple for certain matters. Like, if I'm saying, oh, mighty dragon, it seems that there is a bunch of dwarves who are really, really pissed at me because I didn't pay them the correct amount of gold, even though I swear I paid them the amount. What should I do with this delicate instance? Because I don't want to get bad relations with the dwarves. The dragon's just going to look at you and go, burn them. If they don't believe you, burn them. Fuck them. (laughs) They're really laid back creatures. And every time that a dragon is talked to, all they ever talk about is showing their power. It's kind of odd. Because on one hand, they're above such petty things like, you know, pride or dealing with things like respect and dignity and honor But on the flip side, they're kind of like Dark Elves in a way, where they're like, I have power, I am mighty, and I cannot wait to show everybody it. There's like three dragons in particular that uh, are in the War of Vengeance novel that I really like. And all they ever talk about is, hey, let's go over here, let's soar through the sky, let's explore the world, let's rain fire and death upon our enemies, let's fight side by side as elf and dragon. And that's just the way they are. They're very wild in that sense. It's very hard for some dragon riders to even focus, because here they are, they're fighting in the midst of, of the battle, And the dragon just keeps pushing them like, let's go, let's fight, let's dive in there, let's burn them, let's cause them pain. It's like, oof. Now the dragon isn't an animal at all, so don't ever mistake that. The only animal dragon we've seen is the wyverns, and that's because they're a distant cousin to the dragons. They're like their own separate species in my opinion. But when it comes to the dragons though... If you are going to roleplay as a dragon rider, just know that dragon tamers are usually not well respected by other dragons. In fact, so low respected that there's only pretty much one dragon tamer 
right now in Warhammer Fantasy before the end times, and that's Imric. But Imric didn't tame his dragon, you see. His dragon came to him, which is not usually the way the mind melding works. This is why he's not exactly a dragon rider, in my opinion. Again, this is my opinion. But usually when uh, dragons are with their mind melded partner, the elves, they usually call them Kalam Talon. And Kalam Talon means little lord. Isn't that great? They're derogatorily speaking to the guy who's mind melded with them. Again, they don't call them Kalan, Kalam Kavanan because Kalam Kavanan is Dragon Tamer, Kalidor, Dragon Tamer, the Great Lord. Every other elf after that is just a little lord. They don't matter as much to the dragons. So if you ever decide to roleplay yourself in a little bit of Warhammer Fantasy and you're like, yeah, I seek to tame a dragon, just know the dragons think very little of you. And for good reason. They are, you know, millennia old. They are extremely powerful. There's really nothing that us mortals can do for a dragon or offer in service to a dragon that they'd be interested in. They have no interest in building an empire and dealing with all the bullshit of, you know, taxes, statecraft, politics. They don't care for that. They're a little wild. They like to be free. They like to be outside of society's rules and laws. But at the same time, they do like subjugating things. They do like beating the shit out of people. They like using their power. So it's like this delicate balance between the two. Proud beast and wild savage. The delicate balance between this great species of the Warhammer world. So with that, I leave you guys adieu. This has been Freezer 700. I am out. Next video will be Kingdom Under Fire. I hope you guys stick around for that. See you guys next time.